please tell me that you're going to dress up as Bing Bong for Halloween one year. Should we talked about that off there. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We're rolling time for another episode of Cash's Top 5. Been looking forward to this one for a long time because my friend joining me today was actually there at the inception of the idea of doing a Top 5 podcast. She was the one who came up with a lot of ideas uh, for us to do. My friend Elena Smith, hello. Hi, I'm so excited to finally be here. I know we've been wanting to do this ever since we were first talking about it. So yes, like this, is, this has been my, my peak right now. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> well, we're very honored to be the peak. Uh, we've been talking about it for a while and we've had some good ones. Today is going to be, I think, a more of a fun one. Uh, it, there's lots of nostalgia attached to what we're going to be doing today. This was the one you wanted to do and I'm glad we're doing it together. What are we ranking today? We are ranking top five Disney movies. Now, let me get a little like specific here because we decided because that's that can be overwhelming now that that includes like Marvel Universe and Fox stuff. And so we have decided classic Disney movies, which also include Pixar movies. So you have that option as well. Yes, because uh, more than likely we're going to do another top five of just Marvel. <laughs> so uh, which could also include the Star Wars like Disney owns everything now. So and they honestly do. And and plus, like now at first, since we decided on this, I've become obsessed with WandaVision and I might have like reassessed the Marvel thing. So I'm glad that we had already decided on this before I really dove into WandaVision. <laughs> WandaVision. I haven't seen the finale of the season yet. Have you? I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched it like I woke up early to watch it on the Friday. I tried <laughs> to stay up late, like after my show finished, but I, when my show finishes, I am dead to the world. Like I'm gone. So I had to wait, but woke up at like 8 a.m., watched it, which is not easy when you don't have windows that black out because that is a one dark show. So I had all this glare coming in, but then it gave me an excuse to watch it again when it was dark. So I was okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> that is dedication is what that is. Oh, yeah. Well, we are ranking our top five favorite Disney proper and Pixar movies. Let's go ahead and get it kicked off. Elena, what do you got at number five? All right. At number five, I have got a Pixar movie, Finding Nemo. Okay, really? Mm -hmm. Tell me I, why. I love that movie so much. It, and, you know, you mentioned nostalgia. And a lot of where I was trying to figure out, like, how, what is my criteria for this list? Because there could be a lot of different ways that you can kind of rank things. But I decided my criteria is the movies that make me feel the most connected to childhood that also, if they're on TV, I'm not going to like glare over them. I'm going to watch them on TV. I'm going to watch them on Disney Plus. I'm going to watch them like whenever I get the opportunity. So Finding Nemo is kind of the first movie that I remember going to with friends on our own like at the movie theater, you know, Friday night kind of thing. And I remember, mm -hmm. you know, having to like figure out who was going to come and all that stuff. And it was just so great. A movie we could actually go to a theater and watch. And uh, I, I've seen it probably 30 times now. Like I <laughs> love that movie. It's just precious. It's just precious. Well, that's a good pick. I feel a little bad about this because I don't have the connection to it because I think Finding Nemo is either 03 or 04. Like um, oh, yeah, so I was 15 and we're about the same age. So mm -hmm. I was just old enough to be the jerk teenage boy that's like, get that kitty crap out of here. I'm not watching Finding Nemo. And no so word. <laughs> I, I never watched it. And so I'm in college and a friend, a mutual friend of uh, my group of friends, she came in and her last name was Sherman. And so everybody called her P. Sherman and they kept saying 42 Wallaby Way or whatever it is. I was like, what the hell are you guys talking about? And they're like, Finding Nemo. And I was like, yeah, I've never been in a dentist's office to watch it. I'm sorry. It's not. <laughs> so I have seen it since that then, and I do enjoy it. But I, unfortunately, it missed me when I was supposed to watch it the first time around. I hate that for you. Because like that, for me, there are movies like where I was too cool to go see it, you know, once I did probably hit 16, 17, whatever. And then you know, when you get older, you don't have that same kind of connection, you know, to the childhood or anything. So then it's just like, okay, it's a movie, it's a movie, right? But yeah, but Pixar does do a really great job of like connecting with all different age audiences. I agree with that because my number five for you is also Pixar. 
and it it's a little more late in the game, so it's about six years old now. Uh, but my number five for you is Inside Out. Love that movie. Am I allowed it's, to like? I I don't want to like spoil anything, but I will say I love that movie very very much. I what what is your reasoning for loving it so much? Um, there's a deep connection with me and Bing Bong, uh, the imaginary friend, the elephant. Yeah, it's it's very touching, heartwarming. There's just it's you know I was thinking about it the other day. At some point, because when I was a little boy. I was huge into action figures. I had Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Superman, and I would fight in, you know, in the bathtub or out playing, you know, whatever. And at some point I was like, oh, I'm going to play action figures today. I haven't done that in a while. And I drug them out. I was like, oh, this is boring. What am I doing? Like you eventually grow out of playing with toys. You eventually grow out of going outside and riding your bike all day long during the summer, you eventually lose your imaginary friend. And that was a very, not as, I wouldn't say it was a difficult time, but I just remember that realization like, oh, that, this sucks. You can feel your childhood kind of slipping away. And to put that level of emotion and self-awareness in a Disney movie or a Pixar movie rather was just incredible. And it's a murderer's row of talent. Amy Poehler, who I will marry today, I'll vote for president uh, you got Bill Hader, Lewis Black, Mindy Kaling is perfect as discussed. You just have, and sadness. Oh, the best, one of the best characters of all time, Phyllis from The Office, just kind of sad. Can you uh, always hear sadness when you watch The Office now? Like <laughs> every <laughs> time. I wasn't at the mall. <laughs> like, it's <sad>. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, I don't know, there's just something about that movie because th I wouldn't say that there's like a song that stands out because sometimes the Disney movies are propped up by their soundtrack or sometimes it detracts. You don't like the, the music, but the story, the, the originality behind it, just good. Yeah. I was so impressed when I saw that. And then the more I watched it, the more I realized how actually deep into like mental health and everything it goes without, you know, even realizing it. So mad respect for that movie. And yeah, that cast is incredible and it's just, it's a, it's a great one. It's a great so good. All right. What do you got at number four? Number four, I have got a very much classic, Beauty and the Beast. And this is a movie that I, uh, it, it was the first princess that I kind of identified with. <laughs> Even though she's not because of like, you know, Stockholm syndrome or anything, but because uh, she was the first one I'd really seen with like dark hair. So I kind of saw myself in that princess. And, and so I was her for Halloween that year and several Halloweens following. And I just those those songs I still will sing to this day if it put if if I hear a Beauty and the Beast song come on like Tale as Old as Time I instantly get the like warm fuzzy feelings and I'm just happy and uh yeah you know it's funny though when I was realizing that this one needed to be on my list I and I mentioned Stockholm Syndrome but like you realize a lot of these Disney movies were actually pretty problematic and then you know going back and seeing these BuzzFeed articles and stuff that point it all out and ruin your childhood I'm like Dang, so you really have to separate yourself from like, I guess, uh, you know, what the life experiences that you've had down the road and just kind of go back to childhood there. But I, I love that movie. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that, you know, I know on Disney Plus, sometimes when you turn something on, they'll have a disclaimer. Hey, this was made back when, you know, things weren't necessarily regulated as much and we didn't, people weren't as socially conscious back in the day. Uh, when they made these, there are some problematic things. I, I think you're right though. It's when it comes to cartoons and especially us looking back at it, you know, you try to look through it through the lens of a child. Like I just yeah. remember enjoying the characters and the, 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 the music. Pizza. Yeah. Like when they did the, the live action uh, Beauty and the Beast and they were like, LeFou is gay. And everybody was like up in arms about, you know, why would they do this with a Disney character? I'm like, why are we having this discussion? Like, why does this matter? Why can't you just shut up and enjoy something for once? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm with you there, especially when it comes to Disney, because that can be like the least malicious thing. And it's just, yeah. mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Well, it's interesting that we both went Pixar at number five and then a classic at number four. Um, 
I thought my number four would rank higher, but when I was going through it, it just for it fell a little bit. Um, but my number four for you is Aladdin. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, and that that is that. Why did it fall a little bit? I'm I'm curious. The reason it fell one the one through three are just stronger in for me. Um, I couldn't justify leapfrogging any of the ones I have one through three. Also. To me, it's the stairway to heaven curse or the free bird curse. You know, I've seen it so many times. And I've heard those songs so many times that, you know, it's like, oh, I don't even get excited to, to watch it. You've just burned yourself out on it, which yeah. isn't it, the movie's fault. You know, you can't necessarily count that against it. But at the end of the day, uh, that does, you do have to factor that in. The reason it ranks so high, though, are the songs are great. Um, well, you know, we're talking as a kid, first crushes, you know, there's the pink ranger, there's Kelly from saved by the bell. And then there's Jasmine from Aladdin. Uh, speaking of dark haired, pretty ladies, we got Jasmine with the tiger. Well, well that, and, I know Jasmine was another one for me. I did dress up as Jasmine two Halloweens as well. <laughs> <laughs> and you had Robin Williams at the height of his powers. I mean, there's, I mean, if we're going to rank Disney characters of all time, that is my number one. I don't even think it's close. Uh, maybe, maybe M Big Mama from Fox and the Hound, the owl would make it uh, towards the top two. But anyway, we're, I'm getting off the rails here. Aladdin, my number four, Robin Williams, great music. It, there is a rewatchability factor. Even though I burn myself out, you can watch it over and over again. It's so good. It really is. And uh, did you see the live action version? I did, and I enjoyed it. I did too. And a lot of the live action ones have really disappointed me, but I loved Aladdin, and um, I really, really embarrassed my husband when it was when we were in there because I may or may not have, but definitely did have like two drinks before because we went to dinner, and I was <laughs> singing like at the top of my lungs, uh, a, a whole new world and everything, and he was wildly embarrassed, but. Um, well, but, you know, I am who I am. So here we are. I knew he was Marion. <laughs> yeah. Goose signed up for what he knew what was going on. That's fine. Exactly. exactly. Uh, I'm actually jealous that you have somebody to go to the movies with to see these because I got to tell you, as the single dude going to see Disney movies by yourself, not a good look, Elena, not a good look. So when I'm going to see the live action Aladdin, I'm like, it, if I try to hide, it looks even worse. Right. Like, hood up. No, wear like no. all dark clothes. <laughs> Man. You got to just own it and lean into it and be like, I'm here to watch this and that's it. Well, then this whole on-demand thing lately has been quite the blessing for a grown <laughs> man who loves to see a new Disney movie. <laughs> I guess, although I'm, I can't get behind the on-demand thing. Like I enjoy watching movies at home, of course, but there's no substitute for me to go into the theater. Yeah, seeing it the first time in a theater is always just so much more special. It really is an experience. I haven't been to an actual movie in over a year because like we didn't Same. have- any of them open. I did see that they're starting to open and showing movies like Back to the Future, which is my favorite movie of all time. But um, I, I don't know. I can't quite bring myself to go just yet. I don't, I don't know why. I'm going to wait till I'm vaccinated. If yeah, once sure. I know that and I can still mask up to protect others, like I'll feel much more comfortable with it. But until then, yeah. uh, I've mm -hmm. we made it this long. We can wait a little exactly. bit. Exactly. We can make it a few more weeks. Like, let's get through it. All right. We've got Finding Nemo. We've got Beauty and the Beast. Elena Smith. What do you got at number three? Well, I knew that we would have some similarities here. And here's the first one. Inside Out is my number three. Really? Okay. So tell me a little bit more about why it ranked higher for you. It, it's really kind of the, the same thing that I said earlier, but the, just the fact that how complex it got um, without being scary, I guess, you know, it's just really beautiful to me. And I, I love the fact that, you know, I can show it to my nephews and they're going to enjoy it just as much as I am. And then they are also going to have their time growing up with it because they love it so much. And then realizing how much, you know, deeper it actually was than they were realizing, but also probably it's something that I think is going to help a lot of kids deal with their emotions. And, uh, you know, I, I think that Disney's influential and has been always influential on children. And uh, that was just a really like knock it out of the park version of using influence for good for me. And um, I just, I just enjoy it so much. And like you said, that cast is 
I, like a dream cast for me. It's like everybody from all my favorite shows and all my favorite characters. And it's just, I, you can't, you, it, you can't get much better. I guess you can get too better, but you can't get <laughs> yeah. much better. <laughs> so I think Inside Out and a couple of the other ones, uh, we won't, you know, no spoiler alerts on our lists, but you've got Coco, you've got, um, uh, you got Soul that came out this past year. I feel like because of Marvel and the Avengers and how huge and global that got, I feel like we didn't get the merch factor. Like, I think it's such a bummer that we didn't see a bunch of joys and sadnesses, you know, for Halloween or for, you know, I feel like it was nothing but Captain America's and Hulk's and Black Widow's everywhere, which is I fine. I think about that, but that's true. Because remember when we were kids, like Woody and Buzz and, you know, Jasmine and Belle and the other Disney princesses were such a staple for Halloween and for like just having the t-shirts. I remember my sister had all like the whole, uh, a whole line of Disney princess t-shirts. Uh, you just don't have that as much anymore. So, and I feel like, I don't know that they're robbed. I'm sure Pixar is doing just fine. Financially. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it just, you know, I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot there that didn't necessarily get celebrated as much. Like I would have loved to have seen Joy's more often than I did. Well, please tell me that you're going to dress up as Bing Bong for Halloween one year. Should we talked about that off there. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably coming. Uh, that's probably going to be, that's probably going to happen. Bing Bong's my favorite. Oh, Bing Bong. You know what also really, I, every time I hear Bing Bong, because I watched this um, several times with one of my friends and, um, and we had this joke because like I cried so hard when, spoiler alert, but when Bing Bong dies and, um, yeah. And so that <laughs> she was making fun of me like hardcore and, uh, you know, cause I think she was grappling with her own emotions and not really <laughs> getting <laughs> onto them. And she was just like, Elena. And I like, what? After I saw kind of stopped crying, she's like, Bing Bong's dead. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Bing Bong's dead is all I hear when I hear Bing Bong. And so she still to this day, will say it just out of nowhere. Hey, Elena, I'm like, what? Bing Bong's dead. <laughs> You, so you classify cool. this person as a friend? <laughs> Apparently. I probably done worse to her. So. <laughs> She's a terrorist. Oh my God. So the uh the streak of crossover continues because my number three for you is Beauty and the Beast. Oh yay. So what is it for you? Um, a couple of things. Again, huge crush on Belle uh oh. as a wee lad and the songs. Uh the bonjour 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 the, at the end of the what is the bell song when she's walking through the town uh what is it actually called you know what, what i'm talking about though yeah yeah i don't know titles i'm bonjour. probably should have reached that bonjour. a little more bonjour. is it the one with the lady that's like i need six eggs yeah yeah that song uh whatever that is love that song don't know the title <laughs> sorry um but there's also a level of, you know, bigger guy, not necessarily the most suave. The beast gets the girl. It's a true love story. There's a bit of a romantic element there that you kind of hope that your real life will mirror at some point. Uh, she was able to look, kind of look through the, the exterior for the, you know, what really matters. Just a good story. Um, I remember being very scared of the like the wing she wasn't supposed to go down when it was really dark yeah. um i just remember being really emotional when i watched it as a kid and it, it holds up too that's the other thing um i don't want to get too ahead of ourselves myself right now but um there's a couple movies that when i did a rewatch within the last few years i was like oh this isn't doesn't good. hold up it's yeah. not no not for me I liked it as a kid, but not so much. But this is one, Beauty and the Beast especially, stands up uh, stands up uh, against the test of time, still good, so. You know, I know this is not Disney, but just this reminded me of this because I'm trying to like watch some of the old shows lately and with Paramount Plus, now they have like all the Nickelodeon shows. And um, we watched Doug back and I was like, wow. This does not hold up. I was oh, so in no. it. I was like, I'm not entertained. Whereas I watched Jimmy Neutron back and it was actually really funny. <laughs> so, so I'm really still sad to say, you know, Patty Pickles and uh, was that her name? No, that's mixing up Rugrats with, what was yeah. her name? Patty, Patty, Patty Mayonnaise. 
mayonnaise, patty mayonnaise. She, uh, I was like so excited to see her and stuff. And I was just like, wow, this didn't hold up. So that makes me sad because Doug was my favorite for sure. I know mine too, but I still get the <laughs> that one haunts me all the time. Like I just get it randomly stuck in my head all the time, make up words to it. <laughs> yeah, I get the same for the the beats, the band in the show. I need more allowance. Yeah, that gets stuck in my head sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you'll have a different experience if you rewatch it, but I yeah. just, I'm still very upset about it. All right. Number two, we are getting towards the top. We've okay. had two Pixar and one classic. What do we got at number two? We're going back to a classic, The Lion King. Okay, so tell me about The Lion King because I feel like this is, if you're going to do like a March Madness bracket, mm -hmm. this is a number one seed mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. most everybody. Well, and especially because I, I loved the movie, right? And then I had a whole new connection to it when I saw the Broadway production of it. And I think that that also really plays into why I hold this, this movie so special to my heart is because there's two different just layers of it that, that I have so many fond memories of. And so <clears throat> um, the fact also that Jonathan Taylor Thomas was the voice of Simba was very exhilarating to me as a young child. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe still now, you know, but he, uh, I, I remember that being very exciting to me, but I was really young because this is like a 93, 4, 5? 94. 94. So I'm, you know, five years old, four or five years old. And um, I remember seeing it in the theater too, just like I remember seeing Beauty and the Beast, but I think Beauty and the Beast was probably my first. But anyway, uh, the songs I love, I sang, I just can't wait to be king a, a bajillion times. Uh, <laughs> I, and I always love trying to sing that little Lanala note. It's super, super high, but uh, I just, everything, the story, the, the pure devastation that I felt and like, that's the first time I remember feeling just so upset in the theater uh, when his dad dies, when Fossa dies. And I, I didn't know what to do with those emotions. And I remember it so vividly. And just the fact that you know, that was the first time I had really reacted to art in like, such an emotional way was really, really memorable for me. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I absolutely love it. And I still go see, you know, every time I go to Disney World, I'll go to that, um, I can never remember what it's called, but Lion King Festival or, what, yeah. you know, that. And if I ever see that it's coming through town, the Broadway production, I'm going to go see it. I just think it's so beautiful, <laughs> so lovely. And it still holds up very strongly today. Yeah, I think it says a lot for the soundtrack when you can mm -hmm. probably put the CD in, and that's how old I am, CD. You can put the CD in or you can put the playlist onto the soundtrack and sing along to every one. They're all bangers. You know, know. it's not like just the one song. It's all of them. It's throughout the whole movie. And it is, yeah, it's really, really good. I was a little more pumped about the fact that Ferris Bueller, uh, Matthew Broderick voiced adult Simba uh, yes. uh, than I was JTT, but those are our differences, I suppose. <laughs> I, I don't think I had seen Bueller at the time, but uh, I do remember finding out that Matthew Broderick voiced him and I didn't know that before and it blew my mind. Like I, I didn't know and, and that was exciting when I got older, but yeah. JTT voiced that. Well, my number two for you is usually one that confuses people when I tell them how much I love it. I don't understand why, but we'll see. Um, my number two for you, again, I had Inside Out, I had Aladdin, I had Beauty and the Beast. My number two is The Jungle Book. Okay. Jungle Book is one I never got really into. So I think I see why, why is it that for you? It's just so good. And that's very lame to put it that way. It's just one of those, like, I just feel a connection to it. Um, I have this longstanding theory about movies and I might be crazy. I might not be, but um, there's something about food and drink in movies that if it looks really appetizing, it makes you like the movie more. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And when Bagheera has his, his purple eye because he's you know black panther or puma he's got and then baloo is eating the purple grapes it's a cartoon it's drawn but those grapes look like the best grapes in the world and i always I'm like those look so delicious 
uh, I love the the songs. Uh, the the monkey song when with the, the orangutans uh, is probably one of my favorite Disney songs ever. Um, I have always had really good mentors in my life. My uncle Phil, who's 13 years older, so he's always been like kind of a big brother. I've always been kind of really tight with my folks. Um, my former boss Boomer, who you know, uh, kind of a bigger guy, a big brother vibe. So I've had Baloo's my whole life. And so to have Baloo look out for the man cub, and I think Sher Khan, in my opinion, other than maybe Ursula, best villain in Disney history for me, uh, it's just incredible. I love it. There's nothing about that movie I don't like. That's the other thing. I don't, you don't skip, uh, you know, other times, other movies, you can kind of like get to the scene you want to see, or you get to the song you want to sing along with. That one is just all the way through. I wish I could say more about it. You know, that, like I said, like that was one that I, I just never really connected with. And I don't know if it's because when I saw it, maybe it is that representation thing, because that was really big. Like, and I didn't realize how much that, like me seeing myself in something was important to me until I got older. And I don't mm -hmm. think I would have understood that that's why I didn't connect with something back then. But uh, the fact that it's about a little boy and, you know, doing all these adventures, I guess I just, ne I think that's why I didn't connect. I need to go back and watch it because, uh, well, I first of all love Baloo, but I, I, I just, I, don't, I can't even remember. I couldn't even remember when you said the villain's name. I was like, I forgot that that was even the villain's name. Yeah, the tiger. In your honor, I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> I'm going to watch it again. I'm going to report back to you. I'm going to text you and I'm going to be like, you were right. Or I'll be like, I was right. <laughs> well, well, there's also, well, you may not only because there may not be the nostalgia factor. For me, I loved it as a kid. You with a fresh set of adult eyes, you'd be like, okay, no, I get why you would like this, but it's, yeah, I missed it or it missed me. However you want to look at it. Um, but the song, uh, yeah. I want to be like you, shooby dooby, like that is oh, such a good so song. Good. Yeah, that alone is is worth it. Um, and that song covered so much, like all of those uh, Disney recreation um, CDs. You remember, like back in the early two thousands when they did "We Love Disney" or like you know uh, Disney Channel stars would always do covers of the classics. So it'd be like oh, Ashley yeah. Tisdale doing "A Dream Is the Wish Your Heart Makes." Like everybody did it. Was it Fall Out Boy that did that song? It was something like one of the punk rock bands, pop rock bands. Oh, it was one of my favorite Disney covers ever. I, I don't. I'm really upset. I don't know because I don't think I've heard it, and now I have to go listen to it top-notch cover stuff right there you yeah you got to go listen to that you go listen to that I'm and i'll excited. watch the whole movie equal <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> okay so we've reached the number one spot i have no guess for what yours is i hmm. i actually know i take that back i do have a guess um but to recap we've got finding nemo we've got mm -hmm. beauty and the beast inside out lion king is it your number one at pixar <laughs> It is. Okay, it is I think I know, movie. we'll see. Elena Smith, your favorite Disney movie of all time, what do you got? Well, if you're really paying attention, you'll probably notice that I keep bringing up this theme of representation. Coco is my number one. Yep. <laughs> uh, was that your guess? Yeah. Yay! For that yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, even as an adult, because what, that came out four years ago, maybe mm -hmm. five. Um, but I got emotional when I saw that they were making a movie about someone that is Mexican. And um, I, I, that is definitely something I never saw that, that it was, it was just really, really exciting to me. And it was two years before that, or a year before that, they had announced Princess Elena and that whole Elena of Avalor um, thing. Yeah. And that, like, I got so excited by that, but I was still like, oh yeah, it's a Disney, Disney movie or Disney uh, show. You know, I haven't seen it, but, um, but when that movie came out, I couldn't handle it. But also there's like another level of it because uh, my brother, I think, you know, my brother passed away in 2016. I think this came out the year after my brother passed away. And mm -hmm. um, Miguel reminded me so much of my brother. Just, it, my brother had the one dimple. My brother, like, did all the, he had the connection with my grandma, grandparents. Like, it, it was just, 
so magical on so many different levels for me. And since it was a movie that, you know, Dia de los Muertos is something that I grew up with, but also, you know, just the fact that they decided to go that route in a time of my life that I could not have used a message more of like, you know, death isn't the end was uh, just this really kind of beautiful meetup in my love for Disney and what I needed in that moment in time. And just this beautiful flourishing, you know, I'm going to get emotional now and think about it, but like, it, it was just the right time, right place, right message. And uh, I'm so grateful for that movie because it actually ended up helping me through a lot of my grief. Wow. I had no idea that you had that big of a connection for those reasons as well. I knew you were a fan and I knew the representation was there, but that, that will never be topped. I don't think, I mean, that is no. as good as it gets. Yeah. I mean, and even seeing soul and everything, that great movie. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know that anything will ever top Coco. Like it just, the way that I connect with that and what it did for me, I I'm just grateful for it. Well, um, my number one for you, I feel very inadequate after <laughs> your, <laughs> after your number one, mine is not nearly as, as deep or, or, um, even justified. I don't think I, I just like, I'm I like it. <laughs> You're like, yay, <laughs> good movie. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Uh, I had Inside Out, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Jungle Book was my number two, my number one. And I had to think about this. Because Jungle Book is has been my number one, but this one beat it out. Number one favorite Disney movie of all, of all time is a goofy movie. <laughs> I did not see that coming, but it's so perfect. That movie's incredible. Okay, what is it? What is it for you? What what does it about the goof? <laughs> okay, so there are several things I love about this movie. One, the song from Powerline, Eye to Eye, is incredible. Oh. I mean, it's just so good. I had such an imagination when I was a kid. Um, I was a weird kid, but I would like on the bus because I would watch these things. I'd watch Grease or I'd watch whatever my mom and sister would have on or, you know, my dad was working, you know, we'd have Disney movies on or we'd have cartoons or whatever. So I'd fantasize like about being Max who got up in front of the school and did a dance and they all thought he was the coolest guy ever. I was like, I'm going to be a performer and they're all going to think I'm really cool. And, you know, he had the hoodie with the cutoff sleeves and the baggy jeans, the backwards hat, just Max goof was the coolest kid ever. And I wanted to be him. And you, you talk about quotable. I mean, oh. leaning tower of cheese, you know, <laughs> Guard so this with your life, dude. Food that actually always looked delicious to me. Speaking of food, looking that's delicious. so yeah. So there's a few instances of that in this movie too. There's the cheese, uh, the cheese was yeah. the the pizza when they pull up a slice, uh, the root beer that goes down the TV screen. The root beer looks delicious. The the hey dad soup, the alphabet soup, looks oh, like. Yeah looks like Chef Boyardee delicious soup. So there's some sensory stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a road trip, you know, goof, you know, goof and his dad, you know, it just yep. reminds me of my dad and we have a really good relationship. And uh, yeah, to me, it can't be topped. So mine is much sillier, more more silly than your pick. I don't have the the deep connection, but still a lot of love. I think that's a great choice. And also um, I keep seeing it popping up on Disney plus when I go over there and I'm like, I need to watch that again because it, it's so good. And I've been seeing a lot of people on TikTok um, recreating the, uh, what, what is his name? I'm now forgetting the pop star's name. Powerline. Powerline, that's right. Recreating the whole Powerline, like the, the outfit, the everything. <laughs> it's so satisfying. Oh my, and it's really impressive. Like a lot of people are doing it. I hope they do the the dance, the perfect cast do. to do all the weird goof moves. That would be hilarious. Mm -hmm. It's so solid. Well, Elena, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. This was a fun trip down memory lane. You're one of my absolute favorite people ever, and that's no BS. I love you very much. Uh, you are on hundreds of radio stations across America. You're a podcaster. You're a red carpet host. You do everything. Where can people find you? Where can they get your stuff? Give it all. Uh, let's see. You can find me across all social media at Elena D. Smith. Um, and then 
yeah, you can hear me like, like Cash said, you can hear me all over the radio across the country. If you like country music, that's what I do. And uh, yeah, the podcast is called Breaking Through. It's a lot about female empowerment and uh, just giving a platform to women, not only in country music anymore, but also just in entertainment, giving the extra platform because we can all use as, as many as we can. But sure. uh, yeah, that's about that's about what I'm into right now. So uh, find me. I'd love to say hi. Awesome. Well, thank you, dear. I'm sure we'll do another one and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Love you, man. Love you too.